<laughs> oh, this is sick. Dude, Hold on. Hang on. This is how pros warm up for World Cups, right? <laughs> Ooh, 38. Mountain biking is excellent. <laughs> the Finnish brand, Pole, made their name building aluminum bikes with progressive geometry that, quite frankly, gave the established players of the industry a bloody nose, as well as maybe even a kick in the arse. Two bonded halves of CNC aluminum form the Oni's front triangle, and a dangling bottom bracket gives it something of a robotic look. In fact, if this bike isn't off hunting Sarah Connor to the ends of the earth, you might well see it make an appearance at a local downhill race. For many years, Pole was known as some of the people making the most extreme bikes in the industry. And I would say with this new Oni, they've reined it back slightly. Now, whilst it does have an adjustable headset cup, it does without any real frame adjustments, but that's not to say it isn't adaptable. Not least because you can swap out the wheel size well, by literally just swapping out the wheel size, it really is as simple as that to have quite a large effective change. Yeah, now so the Oni is their gravity-based model, and that can be set up three different ways, both in a full downhill configuration, a super enduro, and the enduro bike that we have on test with 160 mils of rear wheel travel. Now Matt and Henry look ever so smart in their matching t-shirts, but did their opinions of the climbing ability of this bike also align? So this pole Oni, it shares the same frame as the downhill bike, which might make you think it's gonna ride like a bit of a waterbed, but actually it's really efficient when on the pedals. And thanks to its high front end, it's really a comfortable place to be. Yeah, so speaking of, you know, downhill bikes, those normally don't have water bottles. In the past, Poles made the machine capable of carrying three. Three. The Oni can't carry any, zero. Yeah, it's quite an interesting prospect in that regard. I mean, we mentioned it earlier on, but you can swap out to go to a 29 inch rear wheel at the back for this kind of meaningful adjustment that could make it steeper again and really does put a lot of weight on that front wheel. But even with the 27.5 bike, we found the bottom bracket was pretty high. Now that might come back to thank you in terms of climbing because you just simply have so much more clearance. That high bottom bracket plus the 50 millimeter rise bar on the tall front end can give the Oni a tipping sensation. And through tighter tech, it can feel like you're on stilts. It does offer a large amount of grip though, which is even more impressive when you consider how efficient it is while pedaling. Some of these characteristics should make this thing shine on descents, especially steeper, rough, chunky sections. So just looking at the Oni, everything about this frame looks kind of jacked up and high off the ground. And that goes for the front end of the bike too. These massive 50 mil rise bars gives you a very comfortable, confident feeling going down anything steep. Absolutely, you're kind of up and kind of heels dropped looking ahead of the trail. One thing though that is a trade-off with that though, and it's mainly around the bottom bracket which holds a lot of the rider's mass. And because it feels somewhat high, it's really hard to drive the bike through turns. When you get it good, it really, really can rip because it's a very stiff frame as well. But I felt that that window wasn't so large as it was on some of the other bikes. If you're not up to speed on how Pole makes their bikes, they're actually two bricks of aluminum, CNC'd and then sandwiched together. And this makes for a very stiff ride in terms of the frame and the suspension. Now, the good thing about that is you can pump and generate speed quite quickly. Stiffness is a relative thing. We obviously want bikes to be able to handle the power the rider puts down and not feel like a, a wet noodle. However, stiffness flies awfully close to harsh. And for you know repeated hits, through trying to get the bike to track when grip was perhaps slightly lower, this bike is harsh and that affects both performance as well as comfort. One thing I quite liked about the pole was the level of mid-stroke support that it offered, meaning that we could really make the most of that stiff frame when you wanted to pump and push the bike to generate speed. However, we didn't necessarily have the most success in terms of bottom out resistance or the end stroke. Yeah, there were definitely a few major bottom out instances. And despite playing with a range of pressures on that super fancy RockShox Vivid Airshock, even with that hydraulic bottom out feature, you know, we couldn't resist those metal on metal feelings. And honestly, the bike felt like it went beyond its travel. Sometimes I thought I left the rear end of the bike on the trail. Stiffness is largely a personal preference. We can't imagine many people will enjoy going to a bike this extreme in that regard. That said, on slower or techier trails, arguably where the moderate modern geometry combined with a high bottom bracket really shines, the issues with comfort dissipate. For a bike with no water bottle and a downhill pedigree, it would be nice if it was more comfortable and pliable on rough, 
fast bike park runs though, because it can get to be a real handful on blown out berms. So let's talk about this Oni frame. Now something that I thought was actually really, really cool and full credit to Paul, was this is kind of one frame to do it all. It comes in three different settings. It is a true downhill bike. It is a real enduro bike. And although it seems kind of slightly goofy, swapping out that whole rear wheel Listen, I think it's more worthwhile than 0.3 degrees through a flip chip. That is a really effective adjustment. It might not be to everyone's tastes, but it's very, it very pronounced its change. Yeah, that did work. And there is some, you know, pretty intricate machining and construction going on here. But one thing that was kind of leaving us wishing for more damping in the frame was, you know, sort of brought on by this rattly brake hose that we had inside of that big hollow aluminum box. And it just sounds like, you know, your friend has thrown ball bearings in your frame and played that age old trick on you, right? It's yeah. just really loud. And it really resonated around the whole bike. Another thing that we just couldn't ever really get on board with, was the fact that it doesn't have a water bottle. That's absolute nonsense for an enduro bike. And even if it is a downhill bike, I don't see why they couldn't at least put some bosses in there to give you an option. All right, stop the press. Since we recorded this, Paul has announced that they've updated the Oni and you can now fit two water bottles. Make of that what you will. And jumping back to its credit on, you know, adjustments and travel configurations, it does have that five mil fore and aft reach adjustment, as well as excellent ground clearance and superb mud clearance. Like yeah. there's no way you're gonna catch anything in there. There's some things about this bike which are so thoroughly sensible and some which seem a bit short-sighted. The low slung seat tube and purpose-built seat clamp look neat too. However, it's also a shame that as with some of the other bikes, we see this one come with an access reverb post that's shorter than what most riders will likely want. So apart from people who are happy to saddle balance down the trail because their saddle can't get out of the way, who is this bike for? I guess you could say it's for somebody who's looking for a lot of support out of the suspension, whether that's climbing or descending, but it's going to be somebody who's very active on the bike and can handle that, you know, like somebody who's strong, a racer like their Finnish sponsored rider Oni. Yeah, totally. It really is going to thrive off somebody that I think is probably quite aggressive on the bike. Furthermore, I would say that this isn't for someone that is kind of expecting an easy ride, both in terms of comfort in terms of how they're gonna to have to commit to turns with that high bottom bracket. Secondly, I'd say it's probably not gonna suit anyone that ever, ever, ever is known to drink water on a hot day. The pole does have a lot to be admired and the brand is showing that it's got just as much revolutionary zeal as ever, even if now they've gone past the frontier of geometry and are trying to shake up convention in other ways. What are the pros and cons of this bike though? The pros of the Oni are of course that it's very stiff and responsive, as well as it's tall slack geometry really thriving on steep trails. In fact, anyone that was looking for a downhill bike that they could ride as an enduro bike for 10 months a year before coming to the bike park for the high time in summer, this would be a great shout. Yeah, and if we were to critique a few things, I would say the cons would be, you know, that tall bottom bracket. You know, we liked the height of the front end and how slack it was, but it definitely made it very tippy and sort of hard to nail when to time those corners, when to push in, and then it's impossible to ignore the harshness to the frame, both in vibrations and suspension feedback. It was just really rough and difficult to hold on to for an entire day. To understand the pole only is to acknowledge its compromise. This isn't an enduro bike that can double as a downhill bike, but rather a downhill bike that you can pedal anywhere you wish. It makes no apologies for being an all out race machine, but it probably doesn't offer the balance and priorities that will make it have mass appeal. It's responsive, reactive, and something of a live wire, but it's also harsh, unforgiving, and can sometimes exaggerate trail chatter as opposed to muting it. At nearly $7,000, it's certainly not cheap. However, it does offer a degree of versatility that other bikes don't possess when it comes to doubling up as a downhill bike. 